morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? I am online this morning because I want to talk about anger. Tomorrow will mark actually nine years of being delivered from anger. But I'm going to put on some music really quickly before we get started. I own the rights to this music. <laughs> so I need to update my Facebook page. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's called Hiding Place. Song produced by Chris and Drew. Yes. It was his hiding place that kept me out of anger. And so I just want to play a little bit for you guys as soon as it comes on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's taking some time, but it'll get there. You are my hiding in a world that is so cold. When storms come and soon me, feel the encourager of my soul. And I'm so in love with you. There's no one like you, Jesus. Lover of my soul, healer. Jesus, reserve of my life, you are the, you are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. Yes, Lord. In a world that is so. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. When struggles consume me, yes, Lord. You're the encourager of my soul. We have to let him be the encourager of our soul. If not, anger will consume us. I'm so in love with you. There's no place like you. He is the place in my life. I am the place in his life. He is the vine. I am the branch. We're connected. I'm no longer in agreement with anger. It can no longer take the space of where Holy Spirit has to dwell. It will no longer take up residency in my soul. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to get started. And so I wanted to play a little bit of that song, um, Hiding Place. 
you know, before I even made the song, um, I wrote it years ago and Chris and Drew did such a wonderful job with it. Um, but I'm very familiar with the hiding place of God. And, you know, I made a post on Tuesday, I believe, um, cause that's when it came up in my, uh, my memories. I struggled with anger for 30 years. Um, I'm not going to talk about where it came from. I'll probably do that next Tuesday. Um, my goal was to get on Tuesday, um, but I fell asleep. I had, I was so busy on Tuesday and I fell asleep, but um, I'm going to talk more about it next Tuesday as to why I was in anger for 30 years. Um, but yeah, I, God delivered me. Tomorrow will be nine years of being delivered from anger. And I just want to go in really quick, quickly, you know, and just pulling up what what anger really means. We hear a lot of people saying that anger is an emotion. Yes, anger is an emotion, um, just like joy is an emotion. Um, but I want to read to you what the dictionary says that anger is. It's not just it. It's not just an emotion because joy is not just an emotion. You know, when you think about joy, joy is eternal. Um, it's an eternal emotion, you know, so it's something attached to said emotion, right? Just like there's something attached to anger. The, the dictionary defines anger as a strong feeling of annoyance a displeasure or hostility. Let me tell you something. I had to get out of agreement with that. I had to get out of agreement with, with consistently being annoyed, consistently being hostile, consistently being frustrated, consistently being uh, easily agitated. I had to come out of agreement with it. Because when you're in agreement with him, which is Jesus, then you'll eat the good of the land. Uh, you can be able to connect with him in prayer and ask what you will, and whatever you ask shall be given. But when you are not in agreement with him and choose to be in agreement with something else. Now, now, now here's the thing. The Bible says that God created all things, even the wicked for the days of evil. Anger is evil. And I had to get out of agreement with it and get in agreement with the word of God. When you think about the definition of anger, listen, if you struggle with anger, I'm talking to you. If you go to bed angry, I'm talking to you. Anger is debilitating. Resting anger is a God in your life. Resting anger, it re-identifies you. We are made in God's image and his likeness. But when we put on the form of anger, when it becomes who we are, when we're consumed with it, when we allow it to rest in us, the Bible says that anger rests in other words, it rests in the bosom of a fool. Anger changes your identity. You become a fool. Like the Bible says, so a dog to his vomit is like a fool to his folly. Now y'all know we have dogs and we see them vomit. And when they vomit, they vomit what's in them. And when they vomit it out, they go back to consume it. So basically it recycles what's in the belly, what's in the soul, talking about the human being, the dog recycles what's in the belly. So it regurgitates what's in the belly, then eats it back and then throws it back up. That's a disgusting analogy, right? But that's what the Bible likens a fool to. And the Bible says that anger rests in the bosom of a fool. So when you hold on to anger, Anger, mm. you become a fool. Your identity is changed because you keep choosing anger. You keep choosing to hold on to anger. God said, I want you to hold on to me, but you keep holding on to anger. 
Thoughts are a powerful thing. Second Corinthians 10 and 5 says, we are to demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God over your life? When you agree with anger and it re-identifies you, reshapes you, re, re causes your, your thoughts to think things that are not of good, things that are not of pleasure. You exalt that against the knowledge of God. When the scripture says that we ought to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. When you don't make your thoughts, baby, obedient to Christ, you have exalted that against the knowledge of God. Taking your thoughts captive, captive simply means gaining control over what you think about yourself and your life. When you are angry, your thoughts are perverted. I don't know, They're perverted because you hold on to it. When the scripture tells the believer. Now, I heard somebody say the other day, you could be a believer, but not a follower. Not a follower of Christ. You believe him, but you don't follow him. You know how the scripture says to be willing and obedient? Some of us are willing. I preached a message some time ago. Some of us are willing. We have a great idea to do good. It sounds good in our head, but when it comes time to manifest it, when it comes time to execute it, when it comes time to walk it out, we're not obedient to it. We're not willing. We're willing, but we're not obedient. It sounds good, but we don't walk in with God. We hear the word, but we're not doers of the word. That's what that means. When you don't take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ, you have already submitted yourself to the enemy. You have already entered into an area that is hard to come out of. Let me tell you something. 30 years is a long time. And when I was in anger, when anger redefined who I was, listen, anger resting in your heart will cause you to sink into an abyss. And the longer you hold on to anger, the harder it's going to be to get out. You got to chase after God to get out of your redefining moment. Because if you don't, you will just sink and sink and sink. James tells us, James 1 and 15, it says, after a desire has been conceived, meaning an ungodly desire, and it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Why keep giving birth to death? I'm here to tell you, if you don't know, you know now. And the scripture says to know to do right and don't do, you get whipped with many stripes. And to know not to do right and still do wrong, you get whipped with fewer stripes. Fewer stripes. So either way, you're going to get whipped. So you can't say, well, I didn't know. Well, he gives us a guidance. We have Holy Spirit that brings all things back to our remembrance. What Jesus has told us. Listen, last year, God just gave me this revelation about eternity versus time. God is eternal. Time is temporary. And this day that I'm on Facebook was in eternity now manifesting in time. What does your eternity look like that has to manifest in time that you're allowing anger to keep you delayed from? There's an anointing on your life, but because you keep choosing anger, it's delayed in time. No, I'm sorry, delayed in eternity to manifest in time. Don't allow anger to keep redefining you. The Bible says to be angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Why? Why does God say, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath? Because then you would have given too much attention to it and would have made it an idol. God is a jealous God. And when you give something too much attention, more than God, more than him, it has become a God in your life, like food, like men, 
like women, like anger. When you give it so much attention that you can't even see God. Listen, most of you know that my mother passed May 6th, the day after my concert, the day of my graduation when I was supposed to graduate as a doctoral student. I, I graduated, but I didn't attend the graduation. And I went to a program called Grief Share right up the street from my house. It's all over. <clears throat> and you hear a lot of people say, it'll get better with time. That's not true. No, it'll get better with time with him. We have to grieve with him. Why, why am I saying that? When you go through in life and you're consumed with anger, if you don't give it to him, who is the hope of glory, then you'll keep going to bed with anger in your life and it will become an idol in your life. And then you'll wonder why doors are shut. You'll wonder why you lose jobs, your, 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 your car break down, you, you, um, you lose relationships, uh, your health fails. Listen, when you open doors and you keep opening doors to sin, it gives birth to death. That's what the scripture said. You keep receiving death because you keep holding on to the idol. God is a jealous God. And when we keep putting that before him, Listen, he's the hope of glory. So if you're angry, give it to God. If you don't know how, get with somebody that does. Get you an intercessor, get you a prayer warrior, get you somebody that's stronger than you to snatch you out of anger. So we can be angry, but sin not. So what does that look like? That looks like we need to walk in the fruit of the spirit called meekness. We need to forgive quickly. Because when you hold on to anger, anger is connected to vengeance, it's connected to bitterness, it's connected to envy, strife. All the cousins come along. And now you got so much you got to deal with, and you need deliverance because now you're consumed with anger and its cousins. The Bible says that the last state of man is worse than the first. So if you keep if you keep dating your that anger, going into idolatry and then going to the altar and then going right back to folly and then going back to the altar, do you understand what you're doing? Ask me how I know. 30 years. 30 years and I'm I'll be 54, November 14th. You do the math. It started as a teenager. 30 years. Y'all read the y'all read the the, uh, the uh the post. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse. Abuse is abuse. And I viewed everything as a violation. Everything. You violated me. You violated me. If somebody took my pen off my desk, you violated me. I needed to not only be healed, I had to be whole. Let me show you the difference between being healed and whole. You have a whole pie, but one slice, one area of the pie in my life was just healed. My whole pie, my whole life was not, my whole life was not whole. You struggle with anger. If you hold on to anger, you're bitter, you're vengeful, you don't forgive, you're easily irritated, you misinterpret the scripture because not now, now your emotional, that state of being has perverted how you think, how you see, how you feel, how you receive. It's perverted. Because it's an idol. God is a jealous God. And he will turn up the fire. He will allow the fire to be turned up in your life to get rid of that. Now listen, the will of man is strong. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk about that more, you know, you know, um later, because I'm also gonna do a segment on marriage. Because this also affects marriages. 
marriage is a relationship because it, if it affects your relationship with God, because you created an, an idol in your relationship with him, then your relationships on earth are not going to be healthy either, baby. No, because how you treat God is how you will treat man in your life. God is a jealous God and anger is no equal opposite for God. You make it competition because you keep choosing it. But there is no competition for God because he will knock down that altar by causing things to come into your life. You got to shut the door. He's not going to shut it. You got to shut it. You have to be mature enough to say enough is enough. I need help. I had got to the point where I just couldn't do it no more. I got tired of living with anger. I got tired of being anger. God is a jealous God. So many things have happened. My, my, you know, my mental stability, my mental stamina, my mental ability just perverted because anger took up residence in my soul. When God wanted my soul, had I died in that state, where would my soul have ended up? Because where Holy Spirit needs to take up residence, anger was there. Holy Spirit not going to compete with what you keep dating, what you keep marrying. Oh, he is a jealous God. When you give something more attention than him, like I said, it becomes a God in your life. It's what you worship because you have now exalted it against or above the word of God. It says, don't be angry and go to bed angry, but you do it anyway. That's idolatry. I ministered at the King's Daughter Ministry um, the beginning of this month. And my girlfriend, Sandra, she has said to me, the Lord just said, while, while hubby was, um, while he was taking me to the airport and she called me and she said, um, Holy Spirit said to give you one word. And the word she gave me, the Holy Spirit gave me was shift. She said, that's it. And I had put together this message that the Lord had given me. And I had to minister on that Sunday morning. And shift is exactly what happened. I shifted immediately into the prophetic. Because as a person who walked in idolatry for so long. As a person, even before I gave my life to Christ, operated in demonic realms, was able to move things with my mind. In high school, worshiping the devil. Yeah. In high school, dealing with uh, satanic occults and uh, Ouija boards and uh, Sooth saying, I, I did it. Let me tell you something else that anger is connected to because do the math, I'll be 54 November the 14th and I walked in uh, anger for 30 years. So it started as a teenager. I was in high school dealing with it. And because of those open doors, where God called me to, I have a deliverance ministry I can see a demon as easily as I can see you. And because of where God was calling me to, but I allowed anger to consume my soul, that opened doors to demonic realms. And I had to have control over everything. <laughs> Anger is also attached to control. Ask me how I know. Jezebel, no gender. She's a woman, but that spirit has no gender, baby. Full of anger and connected con to control. She had to control. Anger will cause you to get in a space 
of saying, I'm not going to let them control me. I'm going to control them. And so you become a Jezebel, man or woman, child, because it started as a teenager for me. No, not even as a teenager. I wasn't even 13 yet. So it doesn't matter where it begins. What matters is when it ends. You open doors to demonic realms and you probably don't even know anything about spiritual warfare. I didn't. I knew at, the t at that time I would see demons because I flirted with demons. I played with demons. But I knew nothing about spiritual warfare. Yet I kept frequent frequenting its territory. You can't keep frequenting demonic territory and don't think you're going to be consumed. You can't keep marrying anger and don't think you're going to be consumed. Well, some may say, well, I didn't know. Well, now you got to know that anger doesn't give God glory. We are called to give him glory with everything that we do. That's what the scripture says, that we ought to give him glory with everything that we do. So if you're angry with somebody, if you're easily offended, how is that giving God glory? It's not. The scripture, like I said before, to know to do right and do wrong, you get whipped with many stripes. And to know not to do right and do wrong, you still get whipped with little stripes. Either way, you're going to get whipped. You're going to get dealt with. Idol idolatry defined is just putting another God before the Savior. It's the little G in your life. Something you worship. What is worship? Worship is a lifestyle. That's why the scripture says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's in, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. But when anger is your lifestyle, that's all you see. You live according to anger because you're consumed by it. You can't forgive nobody. You got road rage. Uh, uh, you're mad at everything. You think people are coming against you. Perverted thinking. Because somebody will say, just, somebody will say something and you automatically think, oh, they're trying to attack me. Perverted thinking. That's why 2 Corinthians Five, it says to make your thoughts obedient to Christ. Why you keep thinking like that? Lay it aside. I had to lay it aside and make worship my lifestyle and not anger. I want to show a video because, you know, it, 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 it starts early. Um, Anger is not something that's taught. <laughs> it's a seed that's sown from an open door. I'm going to show a video really quickly. Let me share my screen. Tantrums. It keeps going. When it's not dealt with, it keeps going. It started as a baby. We got a toddler here, a little bit older than a toddler.
He's a teenager having a tantrum. Now this is an adult, two tantrum adults. Talk about you got roaches. Who does that? And then it goes to rage. Look at that. What did I say earlier about the scripture? When a desire is conceived and it's not dealt with, it gives birth to death. It started out as a child, the child having a temper tantrum, angry because mommy said no. Listen, if you can't handle no, I'm gonna need you to mature. If you can't have your way, I'm going to need you to get to the altar and stay there. And let me just say this. Let me arrest this spirit, this religiosity spirit in the body of Christ. How dare you say I'm gifted of God and consume with anger and preach the word of God and don't speak to your neighbor and preach the word of God when the scripture says lay your gift at the altar and go make it right. How dare you get it together. You're an idol. You have made your life an idol because you're more concerned about how you feel than what the word of God has said about how you're supposed to operate in the kingdom. You are not the king. He is. He is the king of kings. You are not the king. And because this is his king, you ought to operate according to his rules. His rules say, look it at the altar. Go reconcile, get right, then pick it up and offer your gift. You can't have a temper tantrum and you groan. You look foolish. You look like the word says, anger rests, it rests, it sits, it resides in the bosom of a fool. Stop being foolish and be made in his image and his likeness. Anger will stunt the will of God in your life. We operate in realms all day long. A realm is an area, a sphere of activity. When you're stuck in the physical human realm, the human will, the human will is real, y'all. Let me give you an example. Your will is to work at a wonderful paying good job that's going to give you awesome benefits, you know, good pay no stress, your will is to have a, a successful marriage, but your spouse won't participate in the success of it only in their stubbornness, their stubborn will, and then your marriage is stuck in the realm of a human will. The spouse is holding up the success of the, of the marriage because the will of humans are real, is strong. It can become a stronghold because of the idleness of anger, stubbornness, which is control. The Bible says that stubbornness is as a form of witchcraft. What is the root of that? Anger. Because just like that baby, you couldn't get your way. Mommy was trying to keep you from the scissors and you had a temper tantrum. And then it went to the, the little boy wanting something from out of the mall. Mommy said, no, he's passing out all in the parking lot. 
And then the, the other little boy, he's time for him to get up and go to school. Get up out the bed so you can go to school, young man. But he want his, his earphones. And daddy said, no, he having a temper tantrum in the bed. And then the young girl, the teenager, she wants some ice. Mommy, I want some ice. Temper tantrum because you're, you're being told no, no. God tells you no, you have a temper tantrum and go and sin. God said, no, touch the, not the unclean thing and you go and get into more sin. He's telling us no, do away with idols. Do away with things that doesn't give him glory. He say no. And then in turn, we turn on him and turn to our idols. No different than the, the Israelites. He say no. It's time to mature and stop embracing anger. Stop embracing the idol that you have made your lifestyle. Why should anger be your lifestyle? You saw the video. You got the, the older, the, you got the couple in Walmart. And that was in Atlanta on Gresham Road arguing because his car declined she was embarrassed so because she was embarrassed she got angry and then they arguing in walmart over a situation when they could have just covered one another and left but when anger is your lifestyle <laughs> you act immature because maturity looks like god when he's your savior and your Lord. There's a difference between him being your savior and your Lord. Like, like there's a difference between being willing and obedient. Huh? The human will is strong. Going back to my little example, this wonderful job that you have and your boss don't like you. Your supervisor don't like you for no reason. And you don't know why they don't like you. And the, it irritates the God your, your, your God irritates the demons in them. And because they have physical authority over you, they're making it difficulty, difficult for you in the realm of the human will, the physical realm. But that's when we have to learn how to shift into the realm of the spirit so that God will bring deliverance through something and someone else. God would allow things to alters that we got to get rid of. He will allow things to come in our life to show us, you need to shut that door, baby. baby. Physical realms. Yes, we are humans. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, Deep and spiritual. People say deep and spiritual. Where that come from? I don't know. What what is what is deep and spiritual? <laughs> when what is holier than holy? You know. So you so you you just want to stay in the flesh. So because I don't want to stay in the flesh, that means I'm deep and spiritual. Because you wanna you wanna change your identity and be identified as anger. Um um. That means um I'm holier than holy because I don't want to look like you. No, I look like him. And because I don't want to look like anger, I don't want to look like the flesh. I'm deep and spiritual. Well, I'm deep and spiritual, don't the baby? Because I'd rather be deep and spiritual, looking like him, made in his image and in his likeness, than to look like the world. We're supposed to be compelling the world. But when you look like the world, ain't nothing you can offer them. I'm coming to a close. I didn't want to give too much. I just wanted to be a couple of minutes. But I want to I want to leave you with this here. In the book of James, it talks about because see when you're angry, you withdraw. You don't give. And Jesus was our greatest example of how we are to operate in his kingdom. He is the king, is his rules. And he told us how to operate in his kingdom. And he said that I'm gonna give my life so you can have eternal life. So that means we need to give our life so somebody else can have eternal life. Give our life how? Stop withdrawing. 
I believe it's James 3, or either James 4. Let me pull it up. Yeah, James 4 says, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and does it, it's as sin to them. Anger keeps you from doing good. Anger changes your whole spiritual DNA. And so I want to encourage you, stop hiding. Do what the scripture says. Confess your faults one to another so that you can be healed. For the affection fervent of the righteous man, their prayers availeth much. Stop allowing your anger to avail. Get your identity back. Get your lifestyle in agreement and alignment with God. Because he has need of you. He needs you. He saved you to be, to go through identity uh, theft. You don't allow the enemy to steal your identity. And he relabeled you anger. No. Lay it down. Give it back. It ain't yours. It don't even belong to you. Well, this is your girl, Dr. Rock. I'm about to sign off. I want you to join us. Strengthening the Strong is coming up. That's what we do. November the 18th at 2 p.m. with Elder Listra Jones. I want you guys to join us. I'll be advertising it again like I do every month because we desire for relationships to be healed. Even your relationship with yourself. So I'm signing off. Love you eternally. If you need help, go on ilovehealthyme.com. Sign up if you need a mentor, if you need a coach, if you need counseling, even if you need consulting when it comes to your business, go to ilovehealthyme.com. Sign up for a free 15-minute consultation and let's discuss your needs. Let's discuss how you can become healthy because there was a time where I didn't love myself and I wasn't healthy. Now I love my healthy self. And that can be your portion too. Don't let the anger go down. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed tonight angry. Make it right. So God can download in you what he needs. Remember, anger is an emotion that causes you to be vigorously annoyed. And the longer you hold on to anger, the deeper you will sink into the abyss. And the longer you sink, the harder it's going to be to get out. 30 years, y'all. That's a long time. Don't let 30 years be your portion. Get the help you need. Go on ilovehealthyme.com. Sign up for your free 15-minute consultation and let us help you. And if you desire to be a blessing to I Love Healthy Me, you can cash app us, dollar sign, I Love Healthy Me. Like I said, this is your girl, Dr. Rock. I'm signing off. Talk to you guys all next Tuesday. We're going to finish talking about anger. Listen, I, I lived in anger. Anger changed my identity for 30 years. I'm here to demolish anger, destroy it. So we're going to be talking about it every Tuesday. Couldn't talk about it this Tuesday. 
because I fell asleep, but we're going to be talking about it every Tuesday because the body of Christ is consumed with anger and it ought not be. We ought to be made in his image and his likeness. His likeness is who he is. His image is who he is and his likeness is what he does. Fruit of the spirit and gifts of the spirit is who he is. So anger is not a part of that. So we're going to Kill anger, demolish anger, annihilate, annihilate anger, get rid of anger. God bless y'all. Peace. Love you.